having leads. That's a business pain. Another one is we need to close more sales. So now you've got a bucket full of leads, but none of them close. What's wrong? Why does it hurt? Our team doesn't share information. This is an internal collaboration problem. This is our people are not using tools in a way that allows us to share information across our organization. This is often a bigger problem in bigger organizations, but in a small organization it can happen too, and social tools can help that happen. John and I actually share a lot of our information and a lot of our talking takes place on Twitter. It just works, it's fast, it's easy, we both use it. We have poor customer service. So I've just identified a bunch of business things. I'd love to see some hands if any of you have any of these problems. <laughs> any of them. For those of you that don't have any of these problems, I'm curious why you're here. But I still love you. But these are real business pains that companies are dealing with. And they have to figure out ways around them. And social media technologies are going to give some pretty cool answers to how to fix this. So step two is about setting goals. So once you've identified the business pain, something about awareness building, or lead generation, or sales, or customer service, whatever, whatever it might be. You have to set goals about what you want to change. And I always say that goals need to be smart. And I say that because I heard that somewhere. It might have been in business school, I don't know, but I heard it somewhere, and I like it, because it makes sense. They need to be specific, they need to be measurable, they need to be attainable, they need to be relevant to your business, and they need to be timely. Those are all the factors of what your goal should look like. And if you don't understand what that means, this is an example of a SMART goal. We want to increase the number of leads generated per week by 50% over six months. Bang! That just happened. That's a goal that you can put on paper and be scared to death about. <laughs> I give you full permission. The goal should scare you a little bit, but it should be attainable. Don't put it so far out of reach that it scares you to the point where you're in paralysis. We'll put a goal out there that's a little bit difficult. You're going to need to work a little bit for it because you're going to have to do the work on this stuff. But this goal is both specific, clearly, it's clearly measurable. You can generate a certain number of leads and, and see how much that's changed. It's attainable, something you can do. It's relevant if your goal is solving your business pain of lead generation. And it's timely because it's six months. Another example, close one additional sale per week over three months. But yes, smart goal. Another smart goal, increase the average customer satisfaction survey score from 5.8 to 7.8 over six months. All of these are about trying to figure out ways to set goals against those business pains that you have. Another one is double website traffic over one year. That's a tough one, but that's about bringing more people to your website doing more things on your social media pages that are going to drive traffic to your website. So if we think about all of these different goals that we're setting, it begins to lead us into this direction where we need to ask ourselves more questions. Because if we're going to be doubling our monthly website traffic over one year, the next logical, logical question is, how? How are we going to do that? So if that's the, the question we're going to ask us, then we have to start thinking about what are we going to put on Twitter or Facebook or wherever we're using and how are we going to drive people back to the website? How frequently do we need to post? So when you start with the goals, the next thing that unravels it into is the strategy and the tactics. Step three is asking the right questions. Here's a right question. Who are our best customers? This question makes every prospect and client I talk to very uncomfortable. Like shift in their chair uncomfortable. Because to say you have a best customer is to say that some of your customers aren't your best. And that's very difficult for a business to swallow because we've all heard the customer is always right. Sometimes the customer is wrong, and they are terrible, and they are horrible, and you want to fire them. And that's fine. What you want are your best customers. These are the people that go out and tell everybody about you. Does anybody know a restaurant called Catahoula? Mm -hmm. yeah. Cajun Creole over on Front Street. Now you know about it. Know why? Because I love it. And I tell people about it. I'm their best customer. They don't want the person that comes in with the Groupon, eats there once, and says, gumbo is a little salty. <laughs> they don't want that person. Get out. That's cool. Are you going to come back? Probably not. But I'm coming back, and I'm telling everybody in this room about it. They want more of me. You want more customers that are going to get up on stage and tell everybody about you. 
They're going to go to networking events, and when they hear what you do, they're going to tell people that. I bet at least two of you in this room, when you leave here and hear the words social media, will think of my beautiful face. <laughs> I know this because I have the track record to prove it. I have friends in my network that if they even smell that word, they say my name. Got cards in their back, Psh, Jeff. That's what you want. You want those people in your network and in your life, and you want to identify them. You want to know what they are. What are they? Who are they? What do they like? Is it Betty Homemaker who loves recipes and the color green? Or is it um, you know, the hipster team that lives in Northern Liberties that really likes Pabst Blue Ribbon? Who is your customer that is the best? Identify them and find more of them. That's a question. This is another question. Why do people buy from you instead of your competitor? Think about it. It's a really good question to ask. I know why people buy from me instead of the competitors, so I know what the hell I'm talking about. And I tie it to business results. That's a dis it's a differentiator, it's something I can uh, continue working with. You need to figure out what is your differentiator? What makes you different? What makes the people that buy from you buy from you? You know how you find that out? Ask them. You got a really cool customer that you like to, you know, kind of chum around with? Ask them why they use you. Ask them why they like to come into your store or buy from you online or whatever it is. Find the answers to these questions because all these combined with those five elements and combined with all the other things we've come up with, the goals, et cetera, is going to tell you what you should do in your social media strategy. So this is sort of a paint by numbers here that I'm giving you. Because I can't give you the answer, but I can give you all the components. So that's another question you can ask yourself. Another question is, what's the most valuable thing you can offer your customer? Great customer service. Great customer service. That's a good one. What if you have uh, a product? You can offer support freely on a blog, for instance. What if um, you have specialized knowledge about certain recipes from your, uh, you know, your restaurant, let's say. You can offer recipes on your blog. You can offer it on Twitter. You can offer it on Facebook. What's valuable to them? What's going to make them feel a sense of trust and loyalty to you? Giving them something valuable is a way to do that. I give away free time to people constantly. I have coffee. I have a lot of breakfasts. I have a lot of lunch. I also like to eat. So that's good. But I like to go out with people and give away knowledge. That for me is valuable. That's my business strategy. I give away free stuff, information for free, much like Dave. Give away relevant, valuable information for, for free. So think about what you have that's valuable that you can give away for free or at a lower cost. Who is their biggest fan inside the company? No one saw this coming. There is no one in this room who saw this coming, maybe, except for Dave. Mm -hmm. he's I've seen it before. <laughs> No one ever thinks about their people. They always think about getting people outside. They start thinking about who in the world loves us. And that's great. But who inside your company really digs working for you? I know for a fact that John digs working for me. And I work really hard to keep it that way. But he's put it on Twitter. And I didn't ask him to. But for me, that's awesome. That really, I, I can't pay for that kind of brand. I mean, I, I do pay him. But the point is, is <laughs> I didn't pay him to do that. That for me was incredible. For you, you're going to have somebody inside your company that really loves what you do. They're really tied to your mission. They're really tied to your people. They're really tied to your business philosophy. Those are people that you want to think about and set them free to a certain extent to help act on behalf of your brand and encourage other people. They're your ambassadors. But they're your internal ambassadors. But think about who they are. The next one is the obvious one, which is who is your biggest fan outside the company. This is similar to your, your best customer, but sometimes your best customer and your biggest fan are two different people. Your best customer might be the person that you never talk with. They never talk about you, but they buy a ton of stuff. Your biggest fan may only buy it from you once a year, but they tell everyone in the world about you. They don't have the money to pay you and compensate you for how awesome you are, but they've got the lip service. They've got the network. Those are the connectors. Those are the people that are out there talking about you. Identify who they are and reward them. Who's the one thing that slows us down the most internally? Some of you will completely get this, and most of you are probably looking at that like, that is totally irrelevant. But if you are the type of company that has a number of different types of, uh, a number of different silos in your business, or a number of different departments, and they're not communicating, email is not the answer. It's actually mainly the problem, and so are meetings, usually, with my philosophy. But finding a way to use social tools to increase your internal collaboration can be a very effective solution to opening up those lines of communication about what's happening. 
Um, one that I recommend, there's one called Yammer, another one called Socialcast. These are basically like Twitter slash Facebook for inside your company. Nobody from the outside sees it, but it's a way of keeping a running dialogue about what's happening. I met with this client, went well. Had a call with this client, went well. It's not a CRM, but it's an activity stream for your company. Might be helpful if you're suffering from that collaboration issue. So this one is a really important question that I usually ask uh, clients because I find that everyone falls on one side or another. You either have more money or you have more time. If you have more time, you are going to be doing all of this content stuff and all of this listening and all of this measurement and all of this promotion yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually love clients like that. I love to teach. So that's great. To take it on, become a social business, I encourage you. But if you have more money than time, you literally have no time to be putting things on Facebook, you probably should think about what components you should be outsourcing. Maybe it's just having someone write you a newsletter twice a month. You can find people who do that. They charge about $50 to $75 an hour. They'll write you a post in about an hour. You just got your content done for the entire month for $150 or $100. So think about that, because you really need to understand what your budget is, because I know that there's this prevailing notion out there that social media is free. Let me clarify, social media is not free. Your time is worth money, okay? Anybody here whose time isn't worth money? Anybody? I didn't think so. Your time is worth money. So when you're on Twitter and you're looking up a search for people that are talking about tacos, that's time. And you can be doing other things with it. So you have to be very clear that the amount of time you have needs to be accounted for and you need to be willing to set it aside because it's, it's something that you need to plan for. You can't just be you're going to slip in the cracks something. You need to plan for it. So think about that. Oh, I also didn't say this, but it's at the bottom of the slide. I just realized this. Um, I have hashtag TDM talk at the bottom of these slides. If you feel like either tweeting these slides or tweeting about what's happening here, uh, John up front is actually monitoring that. So if you have questions, if you missed a resource that I said, you can actually tweet at him and he will give you some feedback back. Um, and at the question and answer period, I'm also going to look for some questions from the audience in there if you feel like doing it. So I neglected to mention that at the beginning. My apologies. Step four, do your research. No guesswork here. You have got to do some research. It's not difficult research, I promise, but if you are a business-to-business -business professional services consultant of some sort, say you're in PR, and you've got a client that is having some form of a specific type of crisis, go onto Google and for God's sakes, type in what another company may have done. Like, oh my God, my client has a Twitter crisis, X, Y, and Z happened. Type in on Google. Or if you're a restaurant and nobody's coming in, say, social media, restaurants, foot traffic. You'll find an answer, but do a little bit of research because what you'll find is that there's a lot of people out there who've come up with some really innovative solutions to real world problems for businesses. And instead of reinventing the wheel and trying to pretend like you know each of us has a little baby Einstein inside of us that's going to solve these problems, seek the wisdom of the crowd. That's part of what the internet has given us, is easy access to information. So for God's sakes, take advantage of it. Anybody here use Wikipedia? Yeah, so you're already doing it to some extent, but look for specific problems on the internet. Um, find out where your customers are spending time online. This is a really good one because, I mean, yes, we can all assume we're all on Facebook, but maybe we're not. Maybe your customers are 55 to 75 year old men and, you know, they have worked blue collar jobs their entire life. I, my cab driver showed me his phone. I swear to God, it's from like 1980. <laughs> not everybody is on Facebook. Not everybody is on Twitter. Some people don't even know what a YouTube is. They call it YouTube. So understand your customer. Really think about who they are. Poll them. Ask them, hey, are you on Twitter? Do you know what Twitter is? Are you on Facebook? Are you on YouTube? Are you on MySpace? Find out what they're doing and what they're using. Because you might find out your social media strategy is. We don't need a social media strategy. We need to put signs on our people's lawns. It's quite all right. I give you full permission. If Twitter's not right for you, it's not right for you. It's my favorite thing on the internet, but it doesn't mean it has to be for you. So find out where your customers actually are spending their time online. Do your research. If you have an email list, you can scan it in on LinkedIn, you can scan it in on Twitter, and you can find it in there. And that's when you decide what you're spending your time on. Three of them are on there. Say you have three customers that are on Twitter, but all their icons are the egg, showing that they haven't hashed and not yet used Twitter. Don't do Twitter. It might not be worth it.